Hey, welcome to Gold Trench. So this is part three of my uh, 307 project build, and uh, we're kind of at a stall here a little bit right now. So I thought I'd uh, provide an update and start filling some blanks of things that I uh, previously mentioned. Uh, there's been two previous videos on this 307. One was when it was hanging on the hook all grungy right out of the 69 Chev truck. And the second, uh, a few days ago, when I had all the parts prepared and cleaned and ready for assembly. So, as you can see, uh, short blocks together. Pistons are all in, the camshaft has been degreed, and uh, the short block assembly, the pan's back on, all the stuff. And uh, so we're ready for, for accessories and silver heads. So, that's why we're stopped. So, uh, just to fill in a few uh, spots from before, uh, I mentioned painting before, so uh, what I like to do is is wash the block without the cam bearings in. The reason I do that is on a Chev, small block Chev, there's an annular ring around the, the, where the cam bearings slide into the board, and that ring also feeds the main bearing, so it's pretty important. Uh, my risk is, of course, if you get something in behind there, uh, it's impossible to get it out when you're car washing once the, once the cam bearings are in. So I'll leave, that's why I leave the shop, leave the cam bearings out, I put them in myself, and I do that uh, after. So once the cam bearings are in, uh, what the car, the engine's washed, then it's painted, then the cam bearings go in. And I should mention on the paint, I also use a high temperature epoxy primer as a base coat, and then of course Chevrolet orange or whatever uh, color is appropriate. But I find that the high temperature epoxy primer, not easy to find right now, uh, but it uh, creates a real nice base for the paint to, uh, to stick to. I also mentioned lifters quickly, and I should have mentioned I just said they're good lifters. They're actually powers lifters, and they are good lifters. And we're not expecting any uh, trouble from them. It's interesting if you look at the comp cams warranty, people complain about this. Unless you use all comp cams components, and I guess they have to protect themselves, uh, they won't warranty the camshaft. But we don't intend this camshaft to fail, so uh, that should not uh, end up being an issue. A um, couple other points I wanted to mention, um, cam time. So I mentioned that this, uh, this is a COPS cam and I will put the description of the cam in the, uh, in the, description, on the, in the description for this video. Uh, so it's a 106 centerline XE cam which is uh, supposed to be advanced by design. And the timing gear that goes in when you put your timing chain on, this is not it, this is the old one. The new one has three different keyways. One gives you the opportunity to advance it, one is to retard it, and the other one's on the center line. So typically what I expected was, if I put it on the center line, I would have the 106 degree center line of the intake valve where the cam is supposed to go. What that means is the exact center of the low of the intake valve occurs exactly 106 degrees after the top dead center. So um, that's important, and so I stuck it in, I put it in, and I agreed with the degree wheel, of course, and it was 110 degrees. So I had to actually remove the gear, uh, rotate it to the advanced position, 4 degrees advanced position, and check it again, and it was 105.5 uh, degrees, half degrees, close enough for me, anyway. So. One other thing about putting these gears on and off, I bought myself a little uh, Easy Bake Oven here, and I got that on sale for like $40. And I don't know how most guys do. Typically, tiny gears get hammered on with some kind of a sleeve or a device. I don't like doing that. I put it in my Easy Bake Oven for about 10 to 15 minutes at 400 degrees, use a welding mitt, and just shove the gear on and it just slides right on there nice and no. So that's another little point that someone might find helpful. So the other thing about these engines, there's two places that they can leak oil. The old generation one blocks were certainly more likely to leak than the new LS versions, for example. The LS design kind of solved all the leaking problems. But um, two ways they can leak, and one is the rear main seal. So what happens is, and I can't show it because the engine's all together, on the crankshaft, there, what happens is after a long use, where the seal runs on the crankshaft, it makes a little groove. 
on the crankshaft and that as a result of that when you put a new seal in the lip of the seal fits right into that groove and it may leak right away because you already have a clearance if it doesn't the roughness on that groove uh, will, uh, will damage the seal and it will start leaking and there's no way you cannot machine that surface because you can't make it smaller or it won't fit the seal at all so uh, felco makes a special seal, BS11829, I'll put that in the link as well, or on the uh, description as well. What that does is move the seal location over slightly, get it away from that warm spot on the crank. I've used these many times, used it with 100% success, and I hope for the same on this one. The other uh, way they can leak, and I maybe I can show this a little closer, this is the, uh, the vibration damper. So there's also a groove on the vibration damper where the seal that's uh, located in the timing cover here rubs on it and it does the same thing and makes a groove as well. So the fix to that, Felpro also makes a kit and I will put a link for this as well. And it's just a stainless steel sleeve that fits over the end just like that, taps on. I will put a little heat into this just to make it easy to go on as well. And once it does that, it increases, it wipes out that little Groove, of course, the groove is gone, and it also makes the damage a little bit larger, so that's more likely to seal as well. So, those are the two most likely opportunities uh, for it to leak. And let me go back to my notes just to make sure that everything else. So, the other thing is uh, the reason why I had to stop and make videos instead of keep working is this. Um, we anticipated the compression ratio, I mentioned already, we used these uh, 4 and 6 heads, which had smaller CC combustion chamber volume, that helped a lot. We got up to about 9.1 9 .1 compression, and the, thing, the factors that determine compression ratio are board stroke, of course, combustion chamber volume, head gasket thickness, and the other one is fit of deck height, which is the distance the piston is from the deck of the head. Deck of the block, sorry, uh, when it pisses that up, it's center. It's not now, but when it is a up, it's center. And that's one thing you can't determine until you actually either block up the engine or put it together. We elected not to deck this block uh, when it was at the machine shop. And I thought, I always expected that the deck height would be 40 thou or less, and it was between 55 and 60 thou. I think what's happening with these new pistons. One of the other factors, by the way, compression is the volume. It's called dome volume. It's a negative volume. If it's a dome piston, it's a positive volume. If it's uh, if it's uh, rubber leaves in it, these are four cc's. So we know that. But the, the deck height ended up being 60 thou instead of 40 thou. So that did give us the 9.1 compression ratio. And since we have time, my time will be, but back a week anyway. The engine would have been fine like that to use the standard head gaskets. The standard head gasket thickness is 39 thou. Uh, 40 thou, 39, 40 thou. You can calculate it on that. And the engine would run fine. 91 compression would still make lots of power compared to the original engine. But we have an opportunity here. So by purchasing uh, steel head gaskets, which are only 15 thou thick, I've got them on order. I'll have them Friday. Since I can't run the engine on that until next week anyway, I've got time. So I'm going to wait for them. And so a head gasket of 50 thou versus uh, 40 thou or 39 thou moves the compression ratio from 9.1 to 9.6. That's a lot. And, and it's probably worth a can or 20 horsepower. So it's worth waiting for. Uh, I had to consult with Scott on this because it's his motor. And, and uh, make sure that he's on board with everything we're doing. But we're going to wait and get those uh, inner head gaskets and install the heads uh, this weekend. Have it running early next week on the, on the, the dyno by a week Saturday. So that's the other factor. So we're hoping that the head gaskets come. In the meantime, I can check this in the valve clearance, uh, a bunch of other stuff like that uh, while we're waiting. The cam's already green as, our, as we already made. And uh, we'll be ready to go ahead and we'll take one to get it together once that happens. So that's an update for now. Uh, when we get it completely together, just by way of explanation, 
since the last video, of course, before the crankshaft and everything went in, every single dimension is checked with the dial board gauge uh, and micrometer, all documented on Excel spreadsheets, and a book of documents for its file. So it has all the information that it needs. Machining done by uh, Atchison Machine here in London, they call my machining now, and they do a nice work. I check every single thing that they do and have not found anything wrong yet, so but I'd like to keep checking anyways uh, to make sure that all the observations are right before we go ahead. So, hope you found that interesting. Uh, we love subscribers and we love likes and uh, it's going good. And uh, thank you for watching. If you're interested in following this project, uh, we'll have uh, more videos coming up in the next week or so. Thanks for watching Old Scratch.